Hello and welcome to the Rolling Thunder Podcast. Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Rolling Thunder Podcast. This is going to be my podcast dedicated to War Thunder and its community. I will be having a second podcast, uh, one that I have been running off and on for a few months already, which is the Reach for the Sky podcast, or RFTS, which will be covering anything non-War Thunder. Um, So other games, history in general, uh, Second World War, what I've been playing, what I recommend, and so on. But today, excuse the introductions because... Quite a quite a major change of direction for my channel, uh, which I have explained in my last video, if you're interested. Um, the Rolling Thunder podcast is going to be a series of audio shows uh, where I discuss patch notes, news from the developers and from the community, the War Thunder Player Council, um, an evaluation of vehicles, aircraft and tanks, uh, strategies and tactics, and some military history as well that relates to War Thunder, so perhaps um, historical events, uh, an explanation of battles, campaigns, and the weapons involved, but all tying into War Thunder, so how those battles and events are represented in the game, and the weapons of the vehicles, which are also represented, and how those performed in reality, sort of like a fact sheet, but in audio format. So the first episode is going to be an introduction to the show, and the the main sort of aspects of the podcast. So, apart from the typical introduction where I may sort of have news about my own personal channel and things I need to announce in relation to War Thunder, um, there will be four main segments to the show. The first one is patch perquisition. So, what's new with the game, what's changed, a discussion of patch notes, um, how this will affect you, the player, and I may throw in a few personal opinions on how I think this is going to affect the game for the better or for the worse. But I won't get into any slandering of Gaijin. Um, I'm not going to go on about what I think of the company, what I think of their practices, whether or not I think they're a good or bad company, because I'm going to keep that out of this. I don't think it's relevant, and I don't think it's helpful. Um, So the next segment will be the community canvas. This is going to be news from the community, um, so things that I may uh, discover and uh, record from visits to the forums or the War Thunder subreddit, uh, I'm, I- I'm active on both of those, um, and any news or important information that the community shares, I will update that on the show uh, and prevent- present it to you. Um, obviously I won't be covering every little detail, <laughs> and I-, I won't be, you know, going across the forums looking for people complaining about battle ratings and so on, and sh- sharing that with you. But important information, uh, especially from the War Thunder Player Council, and I will be trying to record uh, dialogues between the developers and the players, should they crop up. So basically important information relating to uh, the community itself, um, instead of the game itself, which is more going to be in patch perquisition. The next segment will be weapon evaluation, uh, where I look at vehicles and associated strategies and tactics. So I'll be talking about gameplay, um, how to use a certain vehicle. So um, I may focus on a nation, a type of aircraft. Um, so for example. I could ha- I could evaluate the P forty seven and talk about its strengths, its weaknesses, um, how it how it plays in the current climate and the best strategies for it. And the final section will be military history, where I talk about battles, campaigns, and weapons of war, specifically, sort of the eras concerned with War Thunder, so pre World War Two, p- during World War Two, and. Uh, post-World War II, the late 40s into the 50s. So if there's a historical event 
in War Thunder, which they usually are, you know, uh, Stalingrad, uh, Battle of Kursk, so on and so forth, I will provide a historical feature on those and give you more information, more background on the battles that you are fighting. And also I'll be talking about um, the historical side of the vehicles, so not just how they perform in game, but information about them in reality. Um, sort of when they were produced, where and when and if they saw combat, uh, their operational history, and information to do with weaponry in general. The, the tanks and the aircraft that you can fly and drive in game. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I would recommend you to listen on and uh, keep an eye on this podcast. So thank you very much for listening, and I will now go into the first episode. Patch Perquisition. What's new and what's changed? Well, there haven't been any really major patches within the last few days, but seeing as a very big patch, 1.47, is only just over a week old, I thought I'd cover that now. There's a lot to talk about, so this is going to be quite a long segment this week, um, as it will be every time a major patch comes out. So, the Big Guns 1.7 patch. Let's talk about this. I've got the patch notes here, and uh, I'm going to go through them in the order that Gaijin has presented them to us. General changes. Two new views have been added to uh, Ground Forces vehicles. Those are the binocular view and the driver view. Both of these definitely have some uh, important... uh, benefits that they provide in certain situations. So the binocular view allows the player to switch to a view, as the name suggests, representing binoculars. So this is sort of a figure of eight shaped uh, viewing area with the black border and a sort of reticle not dissimilar to a gun sight where the player can zoom in and view 360 degrees around the tank as if Uh, the commander is standing up in the hatch and looking around with his eyeglasses. Um, This this, uh, view mode is particularly helpful for self-propelled guns and, well, vehicles in general without fully rotating turrets. So tank destroyers, SPGs, assault guns like, you know, the Stug SU-100, vehicles without turrets. Um, It's very helpful because you don't have to rotate the entire vehicle just to look around. Uh, before you could look around 360 degrees in the outside view, uh, but you didn't have any zoom because it was literally just as if the commander was standing up looking around with his Mark One eyeball, as Jingles called it. Um, obviously this is most important in um, the more realistic modes because spotting the enemy, especially when you don't have a marker above them, is very important. Getting the first shot off, firing first generally means you're going to win that engagement. So the binocular view, very important, especially if you like driving turretless vehicles. The driver view, this is more for simulator battles, um, because simulator is the only mode where you can't have a third person view where you can see the entire vehicle and rotate the camera around. So the driver view is positioned where the driver's vision port would actually be on the vehicle. Uh, So obviously it moves around for each vehicle, um, if the chassis is different. Um, and this allows you to see directly in front of and low down uh, in front of the vehicle, so you can see where you're going. You can see the terrain in front of the vehicle, and you can avoid, you know, boulders, <laughs> craters, things you may fall into or drown in or get get stuck in. So that's quite helpful for simulator battles. Now I do believe those two new viewers aren't binded by default to keys, so you'll have to go into your options, your controls, and bind those yourself if you so wish. Now the driver control method, the driver mode control method has been added as well. I must say I can't really say much about this because I haven't used it myself um, and I still don't really understand what it is. Um, Guiding claims that it allows you to continue a full 360 degree movement sort of around a target um, while shooting. So sort of you apply throttle and you leave that on and you hold down W or you put it in uh, cruise control and you point your reticle at whatever you want your tank to circle around and it will continue to circle around the target and 
I must admit, I don't really understand it. Um, but if you use fast, light, zippy tanks, that may be helpful for you. And you may want to consult the patch notes, and perhaps you'll be able to get a better, a better understanding of it than me. Because, <laughs> as I said, I'm struggling with understanding it. Um, contrail effects on aircraft have been added. This is a nice touch, both from a gameplay perspective and a realistic perspective, because contrails are realistic. So once you get above a certain height, a contrail will begin to appear behind your aircraft. This isn't just for jet, jet aircraft, by the way, this is propellers and jets. Um, I'm not sure what the altitude is, I think it's around 10, 15,000 feet. There will be a white contrail following your aircraft, um, which will make your position uh, much more obvious, particularly in modes without markers, like simulator battles and absolute sim events, so keep that in mind. But of course that works both ways, so if you keep your eyes peeled you can look for those contrails and you'll know that something is there. And also it looks cool when you get into a dogfight and there's contrails looping and snaking around into the sky. Um, reminds me of a famous Battle of Britain painting uh, with a sky full of contrails um, over the English countryside. I can't remember the name of it, but beautiful painting, and uh, a nice addition there. Next, a heat and compression effect from firing tech cannons, explosions, and fires. Now this is also a nice realism feature. Um, if you are got a low-end PC, this may be something that you may not um, need to put on, because, you know, it may take a few frames. But, um, heat compression effect, so, sort of... Uh, best way to explain this is, um, you may know what I mean. Um, if you look out across sort of a, a, a uh, across any long distance on a hot day, you'll see sort of heat waves above the ground, where the sort of the heat is distorting the air, and you know everything looks a bit wavy and sort of like a funhouse mirror. They've added that to explosions and fires and guns firing, the heat compression effect. So it looks cool. Doesn't really do anything, but it looks nice. <laughs> it's one of those sort of, you know, sweeteners. Um, different terrain settings have been added for ground force locations. And in brackets it says, at the moment effects are not active on Ash River and Karelia. So the different terrain settings. This is Gaijin beginning to implement a more realistic terrain uh, response on sort of vehicles and their suspension systems and ground resistance and so on. So if you drive on a sort of dusty track or a tarmac road, for example, your vehicle will be faster and you'll, you'll accelerate and turn better. But if you drive over a field or in a sort of muddy trench, your tank will respond less quickly. You'll be more sluggish. So and I believe the effect is more profound on heavier, larger vehicles. So if you're driving a BT-7, you'll probably find it easier to get across a field than a King Tiger. Um, of course, that was the case anyway, but now even more so. So... Keep that in mind if you like driving big heavy vehicles, <laughs> because not all ground will be as forgiving as it once was, so that's a nice feature. Uh, dirt, improved shells, and cockpit camera. Now I'm not very familiar with all this, so I'll expand the article and read a little bit about it. Ah, of course, here we are. Uh, the dirt, so you may have seen this. As you drive your vehicle, dirt will begin to appear on your vehicle. Uh, and as you drive further, more and more dirt will appear on your vehicle. And uh, the dirt will build up faster and more, uh, obviously, if you drive through sort of muddy ditches and trenches. Uh, there's a dried up riverbed, I think it's on Mosdok, and if you drive through that, your tank gets caked in mud almost instantly. And if you drive into a water source, like a puddle or a lake or a river, you can wash it off, if you so desire. Uh, there have been a few ammunition changes as well, so the chance uh, of which certain types of shells cause fire or explosions has been uh, significantly changed according to Gaijin. So an armour piercing shell without an explosive filler will have a smaller chance to cause an explosion or a fire, which of course is realistic, and a projectiles like high explosive anti-tank will increase your chances of causing an explosion or a fire because the immense heat and pressure generated by that type of shell. And um, I believe this next feature they've recently changed, um, solid and composite shells, so APDS, 
ABCR won't be able to cause explosions and fires. I think they've changed that to a small chance to cause explosions and fires because there has been a bit of a problem, especially with shells without explosive fillings, where you could fire into a tank and the shell will just pass straight through without doing any damage at all. So they've been adjusting that and they've been messing around with it and attempting to improve it. Once again, I apologise if my chair is a little bit squeaky, but it's just one of those things. Um, they've added a new sort of realistic cockpit camera effect. Um, and it says here, if you've played the closed beta, you may remember this. So there's a sort of... Um, the pilot's head will sort of shake and move around and c compensate for gravity and momentum. So if you actually sat inside an aircraft while it was flying and you tilted the stick and you began to turn, your head wouldn't f sort of go over completely with you. Your head will sort of stay upright slightly as your um, sense of balance and direction kind of holds you in place. So I, I've tried this out in a few sort of test flights and things. But it's, it's a nice effect. I like it. It's actually quite beneficial because while you're turning and doing maneuvers, it lets you lets the camera stay straight and level um, more than it usually would. So a bit of an advantage. Um, but it's also quite realistic. So it's a nice little uh, detail. Right, next up, the ability to switch on lights in cockpits and the ability to open cockpits. So, uh, cockpit lights have been switched on for quite a few weapons. Weapons? <laughs> aircraft. <laughs> well, technically the, the aircraft in the game are weapons, but slip of the tongue. Um, so if you're flying a night battle, or a dusk battle, or a very early morning battle, which admittedly doesn't happen very often at the moment, it seems to be a random event that happens in something like 1 in 400 games or something, because I've played a few hundred matches in each mode and I've only seen it a couple of times, but um, if you find yourself in a low visibility battle, you can turn on your cockpit lights. And now quite a few aircraft have had a uh, new feature added, which is the cockpit opening and closing. So now... I believe simulator battles start with the cockpit open automatically and then you close them. Uh, you can open the cockpit in flight to sort of uh, get better visibility around the aircraft and behind you and and possibly to hear better, although I'm not sure they've implemented, it, implemented that now yet. Because I know in IL-2 you can open the cockpit and everything sounds better or more clear, so cockpits have been improved. Now this is quite a controversial um, item. Everyday login awards have replaced times to victory bonuses. Um, there's been widespread debates and discussions over whether or not this is a good thing, uh, whether or not it's better than the previous times to victories. Um, I myself am undecided. I like the sort of excitement of logging on and opening up a random crate. It's sort of it's a bit more exciting than times twos. But at the same time, it's more sporadic. You don't know how much you're going to get. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, and uh, potentially you can lose a very valuable sort of plus 300% multiplier into a very poor battle where you die at the beginning and lose it all. So mm, it's, sort of, it's give and take, really. Um, certainly the times two victories was more steady, more stable, more predictable. Um, this system may be more interesting, more sort of pleasing to the eye, but um, uh, it remains to be seen whether or not it's uh, it's given or taken away from the community. But I will say that I perhaps foolishly bought a few of those trophies, I can't remember what they're called, the sort of, you know, the big packs where you can pay gold and open them up and get a random reward. And I opened up a couple of the large ones, and I got a Porsche Tiger Rank 4 Premium, which was quite nice. I was pleased with that. So, gambling, of course, is dangerous. I mean, you can get sort of a bit... You can get in over your head, and before you know it, you've lost a lot of Golden Eagles. So, keep that in mind, and gamble responsibly. There's a new type of bomb delay fuse. Uh, and apparently this is based on historical fuses. And the bomb will explode after it hits the ground, uh, but not faster than 10 seconds, I think they've set it to. So basically this ensures that you won't be destroyed in the blast, but um, the game decides itself when it's going to explode. So, yeah. 
if that interests you, feel free to use it. What else have we got here? Uh, the old artillery strike camera is back in arcade. So before the mode we've got now, where you open up a sort of miniature version of the map and move your reticle around and place the artillery, you also have the option to swap between that and the old system, where you actually get a, a 3D view of the battle and you move the reticle around, sort of top-down, sort of bird's-eye view, except sort of closer to the ground sort of style. So if you preferred that camera for deploying your artillery, that is an option available in arcade battles. Uh, new sounds and graphical warnings are displayed for players if bombs are on the ground nearby and are about to explode. <laughs> this is quite funny. Um, it's happened to me a few times now. I'm in a tank, and especially in arcade battles, a sort of Dawny A217 flies over and drops a huge thousand kilo bomb next to me. And you just see this little timer above it flashing red. I'm like, oh my giddy on, I've got to get out of here. So it's actually quite helpful. Um, it also makes you panic a little bit when you see these big flashing red timers <laughs> pointing at a massive bomb. It's sort of like Super Mario. Um, but yeah, that's quite <laughs> quite an amusing thing. Uh, neutral turn ability has been added uh, for vehicles that historically had it. I don't think all the vehicles have got it yet, but um, initially they added it for the Panthers, the Tiger 102, the Jag Panther, and the Mouse. And I believe there was a smaller patch recently which added it to the Porsche Tiger and... Maybe something else. I can't remember. Uh, the post-death camera, which follows the shell across the map and as it travels into your tank and explodes. Now different kinds of shell are visually represented in that 3D render. So if it's APCR, you'll get a sort of pointed cone. APCBC will have a sort of semi-rounded head. APC will have a rounded head. Um, you know... Basically, a development of how shells appear in the kill cam. Okay, next segment is the new ground vehicles. The Americans have received two new ground vehicles the M26 E1 and the M42 Duster. Now, the M26 E1, uh, I can't say I know much about the vehicle, but um, I believe it's uh, might be a premium vehicle. I think it is a premium vehicle, actually. Apologise if that's wrong. But it's essentially a Pershing. Uh, I don't think the armor's got any better, but I know it's got a bigger gun, so... Basically a Pershing with more punch. And the M42 Duster, I believe this is based on the M24 light tank chassis. And it is armed with a pair of 40mm anti-aircraft guns with some very cool-looking muzzle brakes. Uh, sorry, not the chassis, the M41 Walker Bulldog. Uh, it's a very fast vehicle, not particularly heavily, heavily armed, of course, but um, it's a tier 5 anti aircraft vehicle with some powerful 40mm. Sort of the American equivalent of the Flak Panzer V Carillion. So that's going to be fun to zip around in. Germans have got a few new ground vehicles the new Panzerkampfwagen 6 Tiger Ausfalken E, the Mouse, of course, the Panzer 8, the Flak Panzer Gepard, and the Marda 3H. So, first of all, the Tiger E. This is the main production variant of the Tiger 1. Uh, the H1 was sort of closer to the the original prototype. Uh, the E is now a, uh, a development of that Tiger. Uh, it's a later variant, and I believe it's 0.3 battle rating higher than the H1. It's a late model Tiger, you can tell by the visual model, because it has the steel-rimmed road wheels. Um, and it's got the monocular gun sight. And... It's got the pair of machine guns, one in the couple of, uh, one in the coaxial, I think. But um, yeah, it's a late war production model. The steel rimmed road wheels were a 1944 edition, I think. Now the main thing with the Tiger is it can now fire APCR shells. These are very powerful. I believe the point blank, the point blank penetration is in excess of 200 millimeters, and at range, it's pretty impressive as well. But also the E has improved armor. Um, the the gun manlet has had some bits welded onto it, so <laughs> around the gunner's sight there's an extra 20 millimeters, I think. And there are track links attached to the lower hull. I think those are 30 millimeters thick, either 20 or 30, so quite some, you get some substantial improvement in the lower hull protection. But of course, at battle rating 6.0, I think it is, or 5.7. It's still going to be seeing some pretty powerful tanks, so don't count on the armour, unless you're very well angled. 
the Panzer Cup Wagon 8 Mouse. Now, a lot of people have been excited about this, and it's been expected. Actually, no, it hasn't really been expected. Uh, for quite some time, Gaijin were very hesitant to edit, and um, many members of the community were hesitant to see it because they weren't sure how it would work. It's big, it's very slow. I think the top speed is 14 kilometers an hour, so people were having a hard time imagining how it would fit into the the game. But uh, it's here, and uh, it's Battle Reading 8.0, which puts it straight opposite the IS-4M of the Soviets. And it's certainly very well protected. Um, the gun is good, it's got the same uh, 128mm that the Jagdtiger has, and it's got a little 75mm backup, which you could possibly load with HE to kill soft targets like anti-air vehicles and maybe weak spots of smaller, less armoured tanks, like the side of a T-54 maybe. So yeah, the mouse is big, it's heavy, it's slow, it's intimidating, and I believe it's uh, quite fun to drive. Apart from when you get pounded with APCR, but you know, no tanks invincible. Uh, the Flak Panzer Gepard, this is a new low tier German anti aircraft, self propelled anti aircraft gun. And I think it's based on the Panzer 35, sorry, Panzer 38T chassis. It's armed with a 2cm flat gun, and it's a lot like the original Flak Panzer 1 that we have, but it's um, slightly better armoured. Bit faster, and I think it's got the late model flak, so it f shoots a bit faster than the flak Panzer one. And we have the Mada three H, um, which is not the one in Company of Heroes, but the with the gun at the back. That's the Mada three M. But this is the Mada three H uh, vehicle sort code one three eight. Unlike the original Mada three, which was a which was fitted with a adapted Soviet. 76.2 field gun. This has an actual German Pack 40 gun, so this thing packs a punch. But it's very much a glass cannon. It has virtually no armor to speak of, especially around the crew. Uh, something like 10, 15 millimeters thick, so yeah. A glass cannon. Now the Russians have had two new, three new vehicles, sorry. Uh, the T126. Now, if you're a World of Tanks player, you may recognize this. It's a it's a low-tier premium, sort of a cross between a T26 and a T50. Uh, it's better armoured than the T50. Um, not sure it has access to the APCR shells, but um, this is this is a sort of a miniature KV-1, just like it is in the World of Tanks. It's difficult to kill, but the gun is uh, nothing special for the battle rating, shall we say? So, sort of the opposite of the Mada 3H. Um, I'm not sure what you call the opposite of a glass cannon. Um, Iron pea shooter, maybe. <laughs> so the T one two six iron pea shooter should be fun, and I should probably point out that's a premium vehicle, so you're not going to be able to buy this with silver lines. Going to be golden eagles only. The T twenty eight Ekranami, which is a T twenty eight medium tank with improved armor. Uh, this is a slightly higher tier, of course, but it's much better protected. Uh, I say much better, but um, that's not really saying much because the original T twenty eight is basically covered in cardboard panels. Uh, but the new one has uh, an extra 20 or 30 millimeters in and around the front sides. Uh, I'm not sure about the rear though, so it's not going to be quite as easy to murder now, but um, it's going to be a bit tougher. The gun hasn't improved though, so yeah, you're not going to be sniping Panzer IVs across the map with this thing. But a bit of extra protection. Could be fun. And a new T-54. This is the model 1949. I think this is now the middle model. In between the 47 and the 51. So, nothing much has changed, you know, compared to the other two. Perhaps slightly different ammunition, slightly different speed, weight, armor, armor protection. So, another T-54 to join the other two. So now, new aircraft. The A20 G30 has goes gone, and it's been replaced by the A20 G25. Um, perhaps in reality, there was more differences to this, to these two aircraft, especially to the crew, um, how you know how it affected them, quality of life. <laughs> but in game, uh, I don't think there's a great deal of changes. Still got the 650 cows. Still takes the same bomb load. And I think the engines are the same. Apologise if I've got any of that wrong, because I haven't flown this plane. 
yet. But, um, yeah. Anyway, 20. I say new, it's not that much different, but whatever. It looks nicer, I think. <laughs> the B-57B. Now, this is a new jet bomber, a new version of the British Canberra in American service. Of course, it supersedes the B-57A. Um, I believe this has improved uh, firepower. It's got cannons, I think, in the wings. Um, not sure if the payload's increased. I know it has provisions for rockets on the wings. Um, so this is sort of, instead of a dedicated bomber, this is sort of a an attacker now. It's sort of like a giant IL-2, so that's quite scary. <laughs> so it's big, it's, well, not really ugly. The cockpit looks a bit weird, but... Uh, yeah, you better watch out for that thing. And finally for the Americans, the B-29 Super Fortress. This thing is huge. I think it's now the largest aircraft in the game in terms of wingspan. It was previously the G-5N Shinzan, Shinzen. But I think the Super Fortress has it beat. Compared to the B-17, it's not necessarily tougher, but it's got a larger sort of general area coverage, so you're going to have to shoot more of it <laughs> to destroy it. But it does have self sending fuel tanks, uh, like the B-17G, I think. But the main improvement comes in the payload and the power plants. The engines have turbo superchargers and they're much more powerful. So the B-29 can fly higher, it can fly faster, and it can maybe not maneuver better, but a bit more responsive when you're applying power. Now the firepower in literal terms, it's less, because there are less guns, but I think the way the guns are deployed, where they're placed, and the way you can get them on target, in realistic terms, the firepower is better than the B-17, because you've got um, four turrets, two on top, two underneath, each with two guns, and there's a tail gun with another two guns, and I think there's an extra two stuck somewhere else, in the side, maybe. But um, what this means is you've always got at least 650 gals pointed at your target, where that wasn't always the case with the uh, B-17, so. But um, there have been some complaints from people who aren't really flying it uh, correctly, shall we say. Um, you know, flying low and slow, lawn mowing, um, diving towards the target and getting pounced on by crowds of Focke-Wolfs and Hortons, which, um, you can't blame the Germans for that, can you? I mean, it's not their fault that the Americans are so eager to get into their new Super Fortresses and fly around, so. People are now complaining that it's over-tiered, because they're getting killed, but um, you have to bear in mind that this isn't real life, you're not flying in a thousand bomber raid with aircraft covering you with fighter, fighter escorts, so you can't just fly around thinking that you'll never die, because you will. But um, yeah, I suppose they could lower the battle rating slightly, maybe to, what is it now, 6.0, 6.3? Maybe if they lowered it to 5.7, that would be okay, but, um, yeah, the 109G6 would see it then. Um, actually, I think it sees it now, but as long as you've got an MK108 or an MK103, then you'll probably be able to deal with it. But, um, yeah, it's a big beastly thing with a huge payload. I think it can take 40 500 pounders, um, so that thing's a beast, yeah. But remember, it's not invisible. Germany. Germany have got two new aircraft, a fighter and a big four-engine bomber, and that bomber is the Focke-Wulf 200C1 Condor. This is a pretty aircraft. It was originally planned to be a, an airliner, um, which you can sort of see. It's streamlined, it's quite pleasing to the eye. It doesn't really look like a, a weapon, um, well, until it's got the bombs and the guns stuck to it. But um, it's quite a low battery rating, I think it's 2.7, it can take a big bomb load. Um, it's not very well protected though, it's only got four little light machine guns, but it's quite fast. Um, it's sort of like a giant JU-88 really. Um, not as maneuverable, but a little bit faster I think. At least in top speed, maybe not in acceleration, but a uh, nice looking plane, and uh, a lot of fun. And the BF-49 G-14, this is quite an exciting plane. Uh, the G-14 is essentially a development of the G-6. It's got the canopy bulges, where the machine gun breech blocks stick out. Uh, but it's got the new Erlehaub canopy, high visibility canopy with less struts. 
and it's got an improved engine and I think a boost system is improved as well. So the G14 is, in terms of performance, sort of in between the G6 and the G10. But uh, Gaijin have decided to raise the G14's battle rating to the same as the G10, which I think is a bit silly. Um, as good as the G14 is, it's not as good as the G10 in terms of sheer raw power, acceleration and climb rate. So I don't know why they didn't put it at 5.3. Because the G10 is at 5.7, the G6 is at 5.0, G14, slot it in there, 5.3. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but that seemed more sensible than putting it up with the G10, which is clearly a better aircraft. At least in practical terms. Now the Russians have two new aircraft, well, technically only one, because the second one has just had a visual update. The IL-2 1941 is a new aircraft. This is a, an earlier variant of the original IL-2 we had. It doesn't have the YVA 23mm cannons. It has a pair of regular... I can't remember if they're Shavak or the other kind. Uh, I think they're Shavaks. 20, 20 millimeter. So it doesn't have the punch of the later IL-2. But it's a lower tier and I think it's a bit lighter. So this is sort of, like, <laughs> this is sort of more like air. Yeah, a heavy fighter than an attacker, but it's I wouldn't call it a heavy fighter um, because it really doesn't handle very well. It's a little bit underpowered, not in terms of gameplay, but in terms of engine weight, uh, engine power to aircraft weight. So don't try fighting with this thing unless you're playing arcade. And the LR5FN, which isn't a new aircraft, but the visual model has been updated so significantly that it's sort of like a new aircraft in terms of, you know, looking at it. Um, it's got a new skin, which looks quite nice. And they've, I think they've doubled the number of polygons, so that means smoother surfaces, round circular objects are more round and circular, less sort of straight lines and bits sticking out, so hopefully eventually they'll add that number of polygons to all vehicles. But that's going to take a lot of work. But the new LA5FN looks nice. And the Japanese have a new Raiden. This is the J2M4 Kai. Now, the J2M3 has been in the game for a while now, I think. What is it, a couple of patches? Or was it 1.45? I can't remember, to be honest. But the J2M4, it improves on the previous one in the ways that you'd expect. Um, I believe the engine is more powerful, at least. Uh, I think the firepower is the same, four cannons. But uh, if you like the J2M3, you'll probably like the J2M4 as well. Next is changes in the flight models. Now, there are lots and lots of changes, so if I went over every one of these in detail, this would be a very long video, so I'm going to gloss over these and just provide a little bit of basic information. So I'll read a few of the first ones out because these are more general and don't, don't apply to specific aircraft. Error, the, error that led to aircraft flaps not being destructible in some modes has been fixed, so custom battles and realistic battles. Fixed an error where the engine would still overheat if the cooling system was damaged but the engine was turned off. That's quite helpful. Uh, a few changes to the Japanese planes. Uh, most of the A6Ms and the A5M uh, handling has become smoother and the aircraft is more predictable at stall points. And the A6Ms, a few of those have had an error uh, fixed uh, and that error was uh, something that allowed the aircraft to fly better <laughs> with a damaged tail unit, which is quite amusing. Um, P-47Ds, both of them have had their engine behaviour changed, and 100% RPM is military mode, and apparently the dive dynamics have been approved, which is nice to see because the P-47 was perhaps the best diving propeller aircraft of the war in terms of stability and sheer speed. So yeah, that's nice. LA-9, flight model has been updated, uh, handling has become smoother, and aiming has been improved, so with the mouse and in the cockpit. Uh, the KI-61s, two of those have had an improved flight model, uh, in terms of realistic uh, realism. They've been tuned according to the data sheet. All the KI-84s have had an error fixed, which prevented the correct speed being achieved while in level flight across different propeller pitch settings, so that's one for you simulator players. The F6F and both Wildcats have had an error fixed where it was likely that the aircraft could fall tail first with a damaged fin. I remember that happening a few times, so less erratic maybe now. 
all of the lags have had their stability during maneuvers improved and more predictable stalls. Spin recovery will also be easier to achieve. Same with the i301. The Tempest, Mark V, and the Vickers P have had their emergency power engine modes reworked. Airframe characteristics have also been uh, adjusted to take into account the correction of the indicator speed on sharp angles of attack. Um, so I assume the in the indicators, the dials in the cockpit weren't reading correctly if you were coming in at a sharp angle. Apologise, that's, that's, that's slightly confusing to me, but if you can make sense of that, feel free to leave a comment. Now, all of the GU87s have had some adjustments. Uh, the B2, R2, D3 and D5, their engine propellers have been... Uh, uh, changed so they work in combination better, the engine and the propeller. Um, an area with higher thrust of the propeller and nice speeds was apparently causing issues. Um, so that's been fixed. And uh, engine RPM has been more stable. The JU87G is the cannon birds with the 37mm. Changes similar to the D's have been made, but with recalculated effect from the cannon gun pods. Uh, with more precise moments of inertia, aerodynamics, and centre of mass. The B57A, inaccuracies with stability sizes and centre mass have been centre of mass have been removed. Uh, both Canberra Bs, same as above, inaccuracies have been adjusted. Tempest Mark II characteristics were corrected, in accordance with the data sheet. Um, the GO229 V3, this is quite significant. The flight model has been updated and. The aircraft has received more powerful engines. The UMO 004D, with a static thrust of 1050 uh, kilos at sea level, centre of mass has been recalculated and the data sheet has been updated. Now I'll expand a little bit on the Horton. Uh, the battle rating is being increased in the next patch because these more powerful engines had quite a significant effect on performance, acceleration, and top speed both saw a market improvement, so I think it's going up to 6.3, I think. The Japanese R2Y2s, all models have had uh, their destructive overload increased to 10 Gs for full takeoff weight, and the centre of mass has been recalculated. The Heinkel 112s, the B1 and the B2, their flight model has been improved, geometrical sizes of the stabilizers have been corrected, and the engine has received an injection type carburetor. So, uh, that's instead of a floating carburetor like the Spitfires and Hurricanes, or at least the early ones, so that would cause the aircraft to lose power and the engine to cut out if you poured a lot of negative Gs. So, the Heinkel 112s, uh, at least the B1 and B2, no longer have that issue. Now, all of the Heinkel Bs, including the Zero, not just the 1 and 2, trim controls have been enabled, and geometrical sizes of the stabilizers have been corrected. The B29, the Focke-Wulf 200 Condor, the 109 G14, and the JTOR M4 have all been adjusted according to the data sheet. The HE162 Volksjäger uh, has had center of mass adjustments and torque curve adjustments. The BF-109 BF K4 rudder and aileron trimming controls have been enabled during flight. And both the G5N1 Shinzen and the G8N1 Renzan have had improved flight models and geometrical characteristics have been corrected. Both three, excuse me, both uh, MiG-315s have had flight model corrections according to the historical aircraft manuals. Uh, tuning of the engine and propeller combination have been uh, made more precise, and forces applied uh, to the controls have been recalculated, including recalculations to the flaps, centre of gravity, uh, drag caused by the radiator, and the open cockpit model has been added to both. The MiG-315BK has had the gun pods uh, the effect the gun pods have on the aircraft has been adjusted and improved. The MiG-334 has also had similar changes to the MiG-315s, um, but the 
The efficiency of the wing slats has been recalculated, and the centre of gravity in the elevators has been made more precise. The F2H Banshee and both F9F Panthers have had hydraulic boosters changed to only provide aileron boost assist. So the elevator boost assist is no longer there, because it wasn't there in reality. Open canopies have been added on quite a few aircraft from all five nations. Um, jets, propellers, I won't list all of them because there's about 40 of them. Um, but quite a few of the more popular aircraft have had that feature added. There have been changes in ammunition to about a dozen planes. The F 8F 1 has had its ammunition load changed, uh, increased to 1250, as was historically accurate. P 51D 5 has had a large number of uh, rocket and bomb loads added, including 100, 215, 500-pound bombs, and of course HR rockets. The F-82E machine gun pod has been added with, I think it's eight 50 cal machine guns, so add that to the original six and you've got a great murderer. <laughs> uh, both Typhoon Mark 1Bs have had additional bomb loads added with a pair of 1,000-pound bombs, which is nice because these Typhoons were fantastic ground attackers in real life and it's nice to see them to get you know proper large bomb loads. Tempest Mark V and Mark II may now install eight RP-3 76mm rockets. The JU-88, a four bomb load has been improved. Uh, a preset has been added with 50 kilogram bombs, uh, 28 of those, as opposed to the original 20, which wasn't correct. And a thousand kilogram bomb has been added, which you can use, I believe, in concert with other weights of bombs. So you stick it on there, a big cruiser buster blow up things with that. The Dornier 217 E, M and K presets have been adjusted. Uh, those have also had their 50 kilogram bomb preloads increased to 28. The I-16 ammunition for the wing mounted Chicas machine guns has been fixed to 900 SPG. The GU-85, GU-87 D5 sorry, has had a pair of new gun pods added. One of them contains three MG-15 machine guns, I think, three in each wing, and there's a pair of MG-151 pods with two in each wing. So, of course, those are going to have a bit of an effect on handling, but they improve your firepower quite substantially. The G8L1 Zaten has had the Sedum of Defensive Armament fixed. There are now 13mm Type 2 machine guns in front and side defensive turrets. Uh, the B-17E and E late have been updated in terms of armament as well. The turret configuration has now includes a pair of 7.7mm 30 cals to match historical documents. I think those are the uh, cheek guns either side of the nose. I may be wrong though. Uh, the j 2 3 Raiden has had its armament corrected to a pair of Type 99 Mach 1 and a pair of Type 99 Mach 2 cannons. Now the ground forces have also had some changes. The T-34-1941 with F-34 cannon has uh, received a coaxial machine gun, as has all of the Panzer III models, and the F-2. Uh, the M-8A1 Scott, 50 cal on top of the turret, now has full 360 degree rotation. The IS-3 and IS-4M have received the armor-piercing BR-471D shell, which uh, provides quite a substantial uh, penetration boost. Um, I think uh, the IS-3 definitely benefits from that, um, but the IS-4 more so, because I believe up until now it's had some pretty poor shells. I think the shells weren't even any better than the IS-2, so you had less than, or just over 200mm of penetration at point blank, so good news for IS-3 and 4 drivers. The T-54 series has received the armour-piercing subcaliber BR-412P. And that's all the ground force ammunition changes. Aviation has had a few damage model adjustments. Excuse the chair again. Jet engine fire damage has been fixed. The possibility to set on fire uh, a jet engine has now been tuned according to kerosene fuel consumption. An error has been fixed where the tail of an aircraft being ripped off uh, occurred from insignificant damage, so I'm quite familiar with this. You could shoot at an aircraft like a B-17, or any aircraft really, and hit it a couple of times and the, the tail would just detach like it was stuck on with sellotape, so thankfully that's gone now. All of the IL-2s uh, and the IL-10s have been 
improved in terms of construction strength. They're all tougher. Uh, the same can be said for the pair of HS129Bs. Both of those are stronger as well. As are the Canberras, all of the Canberras, the American and the British ones, they're all stronger. Uh, so is the IL-28. Uh, the F4U has added, has had uh, internal fuel containers added into the damage model. So if you're flying F4Us, you may sort of fly a bit more often now. But unfortunately, it's realistic. Unfortunately for you, that is, not for the guy shooting at you with explosive fire, breathing tracer, shell cannons, and whatever else. So yeah, keep a fire extinguisher handy. Ground, mod ground air forces have also had some damage model changes. Uh, I believe I covered this, uh, touched on this earlier. Uh, the, the effects different shell types have on explosive and flammable parts of the vehicle has been improved. The M103 armour scheme has been updated to reflect historical documentation. Detail level of the six-sided T-34 tank, which is the 1942 and the 57 Model 43. Those have been visually improved. Uh, detail level on the KV tanks have been improved. Um, on the KV-1, the cast detail of the axle journal is now a separate part of the armour, and on the KV-2, the anti-recoil mechanism is a separate part. So, what this means is now, when you shoot at a tank, there will be s more realistic damage to that vehicle. So, you shoot at one part, and instead of doing a general sort of the same damage, you can shoot at two different parts, and those will have a different effect. The Panzer IV tanks have had more realistic, more detailed armour schemes on the Madlet, so the Madlet has multiple schemes and it's more realistic. The KV-85 arm scheme has been improved. The turret armour has become more detailed and matches the IS-1, as it should do, because the KV-85 and the IS-1, I believe, had virtually identical turrets. The Yak Panther cannon Madlet has been improved in detail, same with the Ferdinand. Uh, Tiger II armor has been improved in detail, and the internals for the Tiger II with 105 have been changed. Uh, the ammunition has been changed to the separate loading, so like the Yak Tiger's gun, there are now two separate pieces to each ammunition, which is the, the charge and the projectile itself, so two piece ammunition has been modeled inside the vehicle. And uh, the position of ammunition within Panzer III's has been adjusted in line with historical documentation. New locations. Uh, sorry, not new locations. And new changes to locations. Kuban, the western part of the map, has been reworked. Uh, smoother, um, less, you know, bumpy and crazy. Um, a hill has been removed from the northwest corner and replaced with a ravine. And a stone shelter has been added. Well, like a cave. <laughs> <laughs> overlooking the lake. Uh, Mostock, the western and central capture points have been changed, as well as the southern capture point. Um, I assume they're making them more balanced. Karelia, the mountain near the north airfield, has been modified, and the fork in the road from the eastern area of the spawn has been changed. And a convenient pathway has been added to the central elevation. Eastern Europe, many areas in the city have been redesigned, Many unique areas and squares were added, and improved performance on the map. Many visual bugs have been fixed. White Rock Fortress, the North Riverside height was increased, and a bridge has been added over the river, but I don't think it's called Kwai. Uh, improved defence on spawn points with landscape, which is good, less spawn killing. And rocks have been removed from places where they were only an annoyance, which is also good. I've had bad experience on small White Rock Fortress with that. Ground vehicle missions remove probability of spawning inside rocks or houses. These are custom battles, I believe, player-made uh, lobbies. Possibility to select spawn points on the mini-map have been added for positions uh, in missions where you're able to select them. And some changes to the size and position of capture points to increase balance on the maps concerned. And if you're making an aerobatic team training combat mission, you can no longer shoot each other. <laughs> New sound effects. The MG15 and MGFF have been uh, changed, uh, improved. The MGFF in particular sounds really nice, which is a shame because it's such a bad gun. 
<laughs> so it sounds really nice when you fire it and then it sparks. So yeah, sort of a kick in the uh, in the nethers from Gaijin there, <laughs> but it does sound nice. Weapon fire sound position will change with head turn in cockpit if the weapon is installed ahead of the pilot, which is nice. A generic sound has been added for all vehicles other than the player's own, uh, which I assume is designed to improve performance, maybe, um, to help distinguish between the sounds your vehicle is making and that of other vehicles. The squeaking of heavy tank suspension has been reduced, which is for the best, I think, because it was a bit excessive before. Wind sound has been improved for aircraft with open cockpits, and some sound events have been optimised. Decals. Many decals have been added. I'll quickly list through these. Decals for aircraft have been added. 343rd Kokutai Bombers Victory Markings. 303rd Kokutai Fighters. Patrulla Azul Emblem. Spanish Nationalist Air Force Randall. Uh, Nationalist Air Force Randall. Domino Emblem. Uh, 24th Group Suiscas Emblem. <laughs> Spanish Republican Air Force Randall, Croatian Air Force Randall, Indian Air Force Randall, People's Republic of China Air Force Randall, Rhodesian Air Force Randall, Republic of Korea Air Force Randall, Turkish Air Force Randall, Cat Emblem, Will No Emblem, Merry Widow Text, Paper Doll Pinup. Decals for ground vehicles. To the West Text, Paula Text, North Vietnamese Army Ground Forces Emblem, 761st Tank Battalion Album, Album, <laughs> Emblem. For Motherland text, 1st British Army Badge, 15th Panzer Division Emblem, 653rd Heavy Panzer Jäger Battalion Emblem, 503rd Heavy Panzer Battalion Emblem, uh, 78th Guards Heavy Tank Brigade Emblem In the Mood text, Sturmgeschütz Brigade 189 Emblem, 1st Polish Armour Division Emblem, and from now on all decals except for those in digits section can be applied to any vehicle of any country. Flag of Victory decal was moved from Allies to USSR. And finally, a couple of rank changes. The JU-87Gs are now rank 2, and the Tiger II 10.5cm battle rating in Realistic Battles was changed from 8.0 to 7.7. And that is the end of the patch segment. Very long, I do admit, but it's the longest the patch notes. And of course, it won't always be this long, so when there are smaller patches, this segment will be much less lengthy. Oh, sudden unexpected update. A uh, small patch has just been added as I was recalling this. Server update on the 6th of March 2015, which is today. Occasions where ground vehicles would appear invisible has been rectified, so improvements to the spotting system and rendering of vehicles. Improved award calculation when using boosters. The effective multipliers will be higher and now not only accounts for all battle actions but also mission rewards. For example, victory. That's also a very nice improvement. Achievements in battles, wingman and on hand, and corresponding wages now correctly count assists on ground units. That's the end of the patch news. Community Canvas. News from the community. So today I'm going to be looking at the latest edition of Lassar Responds. If you didn't know, if you weren't aware, Lassar is a developer at Guardian, and I believe it's once a week he opens up a thread and lets questions uh, be posed to him from members of the community. So, the way I'm going to do this is, I'm not going to mention the names of who are asking the question, for you know, privacy, confidentiality, I'm just going to read out the question and then read Lassar's response. So, first of all, I should probably point out that um, the f English isn't the first language of many members of the community, so when I'm reading out the questions, if there are incidences of uh, incorrect grammar, um, word order and so on, you just have to take that and uh, hopefully it'll still be understandable. I'll make an effort to, you know, make it, make it work, if necessary. Can we expect the additional armament for the ME four ten A or B one in one point four nine or later? External bombs and rockets. Lassar responds. I'm not sure it will be one point four nine. Too many tasks with the British naval line. Hello Lassar. Any word on the Bristol Bowfighter and its bombs? Lassar responds. I've created a request about it to our three D modellers, but I guess it will be after one point four nine. Hello Lassar. Uh well, community has clearly showed their opinion, uh, and then he's linked to a petition, uh, which I will follow 
uh, and it's about the ME262BR reduction. And the questioner asks, could he forward it to the appropriate person? Lassar responds, moreover, I received information about all troublesome aircraft battle readings from Council, so we are going to check and change the battle readings soon, and I will try to take this into account. Second question, uh, before I've asked you to investigate missing engine injection or engine throttle settings for some planes, what's the status? Lassar resp responds, still work in progress. Hello, will there be more versions of the Mosquito and Hurricane? Yes, for both. Dornier, uh, Dornier DO17, it will be added. Will there be more versions of the BF-109E, like the E7, and more Yonkers 88s? E4, most likely, and many JU-88s. Will there be a Bowfighter Mark I and or a MiG-17? 50-50. Will the new British line come out next patch? Lassa responds, I really want it. So, meaning, um, he really wants it to be in the next patch. It, it won't necessarily be, but they're working to make it possible. So, maybe, maybe not. Hi, Lazar. Uh, will we get the drop tanks in 1.49? Will we get it for planes, for all planes or any few planes? Lazar responds, we still need to test it and fix some problems with it. Can we expect a tier 152C in 1.49? No, it seems we'll be busy with British Naval Line. I should probably point out that when he says Naval Line, he doesn't mean warships, he means naval aircraft, so carrier-based aircraft. Three, is the Hawker Hunter and Arado C3 confirmed for 1.49, or will they still get delayed? Lassar responds the Arado C3 should be in 1.49. No news of the Hawker Hunter. Next, how many jets are going to be in the initial batch of fleet air arm, and will the Sea Meteor be one of them? Most likely one or two, Sea Meteor will, move, will not move to naval line. Hawker Hunter in 1.49? No. Any counterprop airplane in 1.49? Probably. Smiley face. Any progress on the idea of guided homing bombs or missiles? For current moment, no info and no time to test some solution. Next, what is the plane that will replace the A6M5 Co? Uh, no info for now, last our response. 1. Gibberado 234C dev blog, please. Lassar responds, as soon as it's ready. 2. When can we expect HG162E? It would perfectly fill the gap between the A and the MiG-15 BIS. It was built and test flown. Response, I don't think we will introduce it. 3. Same for Focke Wolf on that one. Response, no plans for this aircraft. 4. Same for DO317 and 5. Same for HG280. And Lassar responds, uh, the same, probably not in the future. Next, uh, what do we have to expect in 1.49? Lassar responds, in first iteration, I really want to see the British Naval Aircraft Line. Two, are more user skins going to be added to the official server in the near future? Uh, response, if they will be good ones. <laughs> Three, plans for the, SA, uh, the SB2C Helldiver? Yes, after 1.49. ETA for the early Mustangs? Soon, TM. Will the B-29 have a 4 times 12.7s or a 20mm turret? 5. Probably. Current state is quite historical, but I'm still thinking about improving its defensive armament. Which is a fair point, because it is getting shot down a lot at the moment. But I don't think they should improve the guns and lower the battle rating, so... I think if they do both, it may be a bit overpowered, so... Anyway, that's beside the point. Next, can we hope for limited ammo load for gunners? At least for simulated battles? Last our response. First off, all we need to do is give the player the possibility to control them. Uh, that's quite a confusing answer. Uh, I'm not sure what he means by that. I'm afraid. Uh, if you can, if you can, <laughs> if you can translate. Uh, second, running 600 kilometers in a B29 and mouse aiming all around is the best tactic now. Even expert crew can reload 2,000 bullets in two seconds. Lassar responds, well it seems to be a problem that needs to be fixed, so they're working on that. Next, hi Lazar. as always, thanks for answering our questions. <laughs> One, can you tell us which planes from the German, uh, the full German tree are currently work in progress? So I believe he means the expanded tree that you can find on the website that includes all planes they plan to add. Most interesting, are the Dornier 235, 335 and or TA-152 a work in progress? Lassar responds, well, the DA-335 is, uh, has been started on. Two, can we expect the Focke-Wulf 200C3 in 1.49? No, later. 
Three, how is the work on the damage model or hit registration problem coming along? Are you satisfied with the progress you're making and can we expect a major improvement with 1.49? 1.49, there will be a new system, dev blog post is possible before that 1.949 release. Four, will the firing arc of the Condor lower forward firing turret be fixed? They use the same Linsen Lafette system as used in the HE111, so it should be able to fire all the way from straight ahead to straight down. Uh, and Lazar says it's a reason to create a bug report. Next, will the Fairy Formal get its 4.12.7s as a mod? I will answer when it will be a work in progress state. Next, one, should the Horton 229 be able to lose tail control without losing rollability? Lazar responds, I know about this problem, we will fix it later, it's because of the control structure. Two, any high tier Russian prop fighters coming soon? Yes, I'm not sure about 0.49, but Yak 3 with VK107 will be soon. 3. Will we ever get a Vampire F1 jet, or any other Vampire variant? Probably, but not definitely in 1.49. West of the Whirlwind, slash whirl Whirly Bomber coming? <laughs> not soon. Hi Lazar, how hard to change P51 D30s, M2 Brownies to M3s? Is it kind of quantum mechanics? Uh, it will be changed. Sorry, from one side it's really easy, from other there are a lot more urgent and serious problems. And secondly, what's your plans about the P-51 family, B and the H? Uh, Lazar responds, uh, P-51 yearly is more interesting for now. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, perhaps not a priority at the moment. How many planes will the Germans get in 1.49? Lazar responds, many. Smiley face. Two, any thoughts about the... What is this? Two, Junkers 288 and the Junkers 388. No thoughts about these aircraft for now. Next, since B-29 now has 20,000 pound bomb load, will the Lancaster finally get its 22,000 pound Grand Slam? Lazar responds, I've already confirmed that such bombs will be in game. Second question, Contras have finally been added and they look amazing. Uh, good work to you and your team, but I noticed that they only kick in at around 26,000 feet. I think Contras should happen around 17,000, 20,000. Um, Lazar responds, it depends on whether on the current map, and if something's wrong with altitude, it's best to create a bug report. Next, are there more plans to add paper aircraft, like the R2, Y2, G10... Wait a minute, G10 is not a paper aircraft. Uh, <laughs> I'll restart. He's got G10 there, but that's not... A, if he means the BF-19 G10, that's not a paper plane. Uh, are there more plans to add paper planes and failed prototypes? Last I respond, there's no plans. Second, we all team focus now more on actually used aircraft including low production planes and prototypes which are needed for the completion of trees. And Lassar responds, it's a better way comparing with previous point. So he's saying that he'd rather do the second point than the first. Next, can we expect an Italian tree before 1.49? No. Uh, when will it be published, uh, the aircraft which composed this release? Or will they be a surprise? And Lassar says, hopefully by the summer. Next, please seriously consider adding the KI-201. Lassar says he's thinking about this problem, and he knows that the Japanese Air Force should have something for the battle rating. For that particular battle rating, uh, I believe he means the lower bracket of jets, so P-80s, early Meteors and MiG-9s. Next, seven questions uh, for Lassar. First one, is it possible to change the battle rating of the Salamander? No definite comments until the next battle rating changes. Two, will we see more versions of the HC-162? Probably no, more likely to see earlier loading with 30mm. 3. Can you please replace the German MiG-15 bis and CL-13 with actual German planes? 3. No, it's not possible, we explained several times. 4. At what tier is the new German premium you hinted? Can't answer now. 5. Will it be arriving in 1.49? Can't answer now. 6. Is there an aircraft uh, planned for the near future? A premium aircraft planned for the near future? 6. Yes, for sure. S uh, no, that was six, sorry. I'll start again. <laughs> six, is there an aircraft sale, a premium aircraft for sale planned in the near future? Lassar responds, yes, for sure. Seven, are you sure, are you guys working on a fix for the, the boosters? They barely do anything. Uh, I have no info about it. But of course, as we just heard from that patch that was released just now, they have just improved that. Next, one, could the German fighter plane's propeller shaft weapon, MK-108, have the possibility to change into MG-151? It's possible. Please release the German fighter D11, D1, D2, BF109, MK10. For now, no plans about these aircraft. 
3, good German fighters, Focke-Wolf D, BF-109, DA-152, with the Federal Shaft weapon MK-103 be released. No info for now. Next, are the navigation lights on planes enabled soon? Not soon, unfortunately. 2, what's your priorities for patch 1.49? British Naval Life Ashore, I really want it to be in the next patch. 3, do you keep track of all the questions and suggestions? Yes, I'm tracking and writing them down. After the last PC problems, I'd prefer to keep it saved on paper. Next, will Italians have a tier 5 bomber? If so, what would it be? No info for now. 2. Will, will Marcolin's CI-42 be moved to Italian uh, Premium? Yes, definitely. Italian Tech Tree Premium. Yes, it will be moved to Italian Tree. Next, hi Lazaro, I record most of my games and I found uh, that M50 car, M250 car Brownings do no more structural damage than 303s. It makes it extremely difficult to fly energy boomers in fighters that only have brief firing windows. Lazar responds, this will be reworked in 1.49. Next, hi Lazar. Question 1, you told uh, you told us that more yaks and lags will, will come soon. Can you specif specify what models of them are coming in future updates? Well, I can tell you all models we are planning, but you can see it clearly in ASAP Tech Tree on our website. 2, also you told us we'll see more IL-2s and 1.49. New models or reworked planes? Unless I respond to both. 3. Excuse me for asking again, but last time you didn't answer me. What BF109B is planned uh, in 1.49? The B1. 4. What DA17 model will receive first of all? There will be several models. 5. Is the reworked hurricane coming in 1.49? Most likely, but in IL2 style. There will be more. There will be reworked only several models, not all of them. Next. Is Arado C3 confirmed in 1.49? Most likely. Can the HD-132 jet bomber arrive in the uh, arrive uh, because it's like the R2Y2? Small chance. Three. Will the Arado B2 get 20 mm gun pods? I'm not sure we'll add it. No comment for now. Four. IAR81. Is that possible as a German or Italian premium? No info for now. Five. Any news on JU88 versions? Work in progress. Next. Since the introduction of 1.47, lots of aircraft weapons seem weaker. Uh, is there any reason for considering the 1.7 patch was supposed to focus on damage model fixes? Unless I responds, I'm working with it. I see no reasons to be to do what you're suggesting. Next, one with the bf 109 g variants get the 210mm rockets. They are equipped with them, but the only official naming of the mod is for the G10 as the R7. Probably. Two, will the G14 get the MK103 as a mod? It was equipped, but the only info I was able to find in English was that it was cancelled, that it was called the G14U6. Most likely. When are we going to get some sweet jazz music for the BF110? He's referring to Schrager Music, upward firing anti bomber weaponry. Uh, after we're working BF110 and a new variance, for now I can't predict when that will be. Four is the BF110 with Mark MK101 coming in 1.49? Not for certain. 5. When is the M MB410 B2 U4 going to get a 20mm changed to the MK103? Please send me a link to suggestion or bug report. Next, 1.47 update. The majority of Japan's tier 4 fighters uh, are weakening. Do you think this is reasonable? Nothing was implemented to get this situation. 2. J J7W1 automatic fire extinguishing system has been installed in the fuel tank. Uh, has this, uh, so he's talking about in real life, the, the Shinden had an automatic extinguisher. Has this feature been implemented? It will be implemented. That's our response. Qu three questions about the automatic air combat flap system that has been attached to the Japanese aircraft. Why is the automatic air combat flap system not reproduced? It requires additional mechanics to be created. Four, N1K2J and questions about the series. Will you add an N1K3? For now, we have no plans about it. 5. Ki-61, uh, Ki-61-2 and 2 Kai. Will these be implemented? Yes, for sure. Next, B-57B and camera mark 2. The burst per second is not shown on the stack cards. I will check it. 2. TA-152, not ammo not fixed yet. Should be 220 times 20 and 85 times 30 millimeter. 2. Saved. Uh, Lazar responds, he saved that information. 3. ME163 should be moved before CL13 because of this high BR. Like this, people with only 163 won't play an AB with only one jet and then leave the game. I will see what could be done with it. 4. Team killing. 
Uh, the team killing changes are nice, but sometimes you get a team kill if somebody rams you from behind. Well, first of all, ramming will be reworked. Five, that was a question from someone else. Uh, six, is something planned to stop jet bombing? Tier 5 games are nearly unplayable because they all die for ground targets and you can't stop them all at once. He knows the problem and he'll work on it. Seven, is all kind of planned for 1.49? No. Eight, I guess the long awaited DM patch is coming in 1.49? Yes. Does this mean that the MK108 and 762 and 7.7 7. 7 will be reworked? Yes. Yes, they will, all be, they will all be reworked. When will the Dewatan D521 be fixed with his bonos? Uh, the D521 couldn't carry an engine cannon. Work in progress. Next, highlights are any idea of when the IAR80 is coming? No idea. Two, when the Breda Safats and Ho 103 12.7. Millimeters getting HE rounds. I will try to fix it after damage model. Three, are we getting the Mosquito B Mark 16? We are planning bomber version, but I don't remember what version exactly. Winking face. <laughs> Four, fuck all 489. Possible. Five, one aircraft coming in 1.49. What is it? I don't understand what you mean, sorry. <laughs> Next. The Fuck Wolf 200 C1 Spectral Machine Gun is incorrect. It should be an MG 20mm cannon. Two, Sorry, I'll, I'll scroll down and find the response. No, it's the C2 version. Two, do you know about the Focke Wolf 200 having the wrong bomb loads? The correct bomb loads are 4 times 250 or 6 times 250. And that's our response. He's sure that he already has the correct versions. Three, please look at this, and I'll follow that link. Sorry, we couldn't find that. Okay, that's been removed. Four, why are these bulges on the G14? What sources do you have for them being there? And he's put a red ring around a photograph of two bulges. Not an in in game screenshot, not a realistic photograph of the two bulges, which I believe were for the large landing gear. Lazar responds, better create a bug report. Next, why was a USAF skin for an early model B29 chosen for inclusion as a default skin instead of the olive drab over neutral grey? The skin is for 1943. Uh, our skin was for 1945. Two, what P47D model is the German premium? Please ask me in the next session. I remember that I've answered, but I don't remember where. Three, I'm pretty sure the Gladiator 2S and 2F are made up. I need to check. Four, the current XP55 is using a 1000 horsepower engine and two 20mm and 250 cals from the mock-up testing. Any chance we can see those two change to what it was for flight testing, more powerful engine, and four 50 cals? Uh, we discussed this a month ago, I need to find it. Why does the US Spitfire Mark 9 have 150 octane fuel? Uh, the USSR has no... hang on a minute. The Soviet Spitfire Mark 9 recently had its Erinus fuel removed, so when is the US Spitz going to be removed? Lassau responds, the Soviets had no chance to use such fuel, so I assume he means the Americans did and the Russians didn't. Would it be possible to make the service control lines, ailerons, elevators, rudders more susceptible to the damage from machine guns? Yes, it's possible. Why is an engine damage, oil cooler damage, or radiator damage a critical hit? <laughs> totally killing engine is a critical hit for now. If you have another opinion, it's better to discuss it in another thread. Why is the M23 used on the German and Russian P47s? I will check. Uh, are the P400 and US Spit Mark 9 going to have their British 20mm ammunition replaced with US ammunition? Yes, I think so. Are we going to see an opt-out for mixed battles in realistic battles, or am I going to have to report a uh, resort to bailing out every single time I get put into an RK 2.0 match? I have no info. Why do contrails have a view distance of uh, less than 10 kilometers? Uh, some technical limits, probably. I'm not talking about it yet. Is the HE162A2 going to be up for a remodel anytime soon with working turbine blades? It's possible. Redoubt effects still need to be addressed as negative g-force abuse is quite prevalent. Uh, let's see how new damage models will work and then we'll return to this question. Uh, on the matter of tutorials, can we please see some more? It's possible. Is there any chance that we will see the bomber version of the Li-2 in the future? No. Is there any chance that we will ever get the ki 43 3Co? Possible, but not soon. Next, have you looked at adding the short Sunderland? Uh, it will be out in the game. Next, one, do you have? Do we have any chance to see updated visual models for the IL-4 and A6M? Someday, but not in the near patch. Two, you mentioned about bomber cockpits. Can you please specify which planes will get them? I think we'll show them in the dev blog. 
Next, what's the state of the ME262 uh, Hot Dish Vindicat 2, or HD2? We have all necessary documents about it, but we're not modelling it yet. Next, uh, last time I've already answered that question. Next, one, will we get the J-52 bombers? No. Two, will we get Li-2 bomber? No. Three, will we get more TB-3 variants? Possibly. Four, will we get early HU-111s with a different nose? No info at the moment. Five, what's the ETA of 1.49? Uh, no info for now. Six, what bombers will have visual model upgrades? Uh, no info. Seven, what fighters will have new visual model upgrades? Hurricanes. Eight, will we get the new Hurricane visual models in 1.49? Possibly. Nine, when will we get the new visual models for the HG111? And the Merlin Spitfires. Later. Excuse me. <coughs> this isn't the question. Uh, someone's proposed to post a response for another player. Uh, next question, how are those B25 and A20 cockpits doing? Collecting information and references. Next, months ago you answered that the B5 and the B6N2 was a work in progress. Any news? I'm not sure I can tell you. Two, you told in answers before that the B29 is the initial model and the default skin is the USAF, which was created in 1927. Any plans to change the default skin for one for World War II? Uh, need to discuss with their artists. Any chance to see Spitfire Mark V non trop after a remodeling, probably? Four, chance for early light bombers such as Hawker Hart, Hind, or Demon? Not in the near future. Next, any chance to get German PO2? No. Two, when can we expect the four times thousand pound bomb line for the Wellington? I need to check. Sounds reasonable, but I can't answer now. Three, the HE 112 we have in game are leaving nothing but question marks. The HE 112 A0 20 millimeter did not exist. Uh, I, I marked your question and we'll collect documents. Four, what about HE 119? No plans for now. Five, any chance to get the FA 223 Drache? No chance. Next, are there plans of changing the B-24's position with the B-17's in the, in the research tree? Making, because at the moment it's worse than the B-17. Before damage model changes, no plans. Two, can you show us any pictures of the cockpits that are being worked on? Too early. Next, is a rocket equipped B-24 possible? Possible, but not soon. Next. One, will either the Blackburn Skewer or Blackburn Rock be included in the initial in the initial fleet air arm line? No. Two, if not, when are we likely to see them? Later, of course, but not in the near patch. Uh, question for something else. Question for someone else. Uh, next, what's going to happen to this? And he's posted a link to ME262 headrest armor plating. 1.49, last I hoped. Next, you have previously mentioned the possibility of the Polky 2 being put into the game. Any updates? No. One, ME163B was a tiny wooden airplane powered by mixing highly volatile fuel. One hit and that would make it explode. In game, ME163's rail explode. Uh, could you look into making this more realistic? It will be. Two, uh, Lassara's respond is not really a question. <laughs> Three, recently there's been a post about pre-production Hawker Hunters with an air brake. Has this influenced the decision on not equipping the Hunter with an air brake? Nothing to say for now. Next, do you think the Super Marine Swift has a good chance to get more thunder? Not in the current state. Next, why was there no British plane in World War 7? Because of naval line of priority. Next, one, will the Hunter be in 1.49? No. Will the Sea Meteor move to the FAA, FAA line? No. Will we get the Canberra Mark 8? No. Has work started on the HE219? Yes. Why won't the F84F be in the game? Because for its current state, the USAF does not require more jets. Six, are you ever going to add rockets to the Canberra, as they were historically? Yes, but you should understand that Canberra is aircraft that probably will not have some kind of armament. I assume that's for balance purposes. Seven, any news on the Act 25? No news. Eight, will you introduce other aircraft types such as reconnaissance? Small chance. Nine, how many planes are almost finished for the FAA? Uh, ten research around ten researchable aircraft. Next, what title will the Yak Nine B get? Like bomber or fighter attacker, fighter slash bomber. Would the Yak Nine B get a higher spawn than most f fighter aircraft in the game because it was a bomber area variant, not just a plane with hard points? I'm not decided yet. Maximum is an attacker spawn point anyway. Three. How long until the MBR two is added? No clue. Four. Did you know that JE fifty two had multiple bomber variants? 
Uh, still no plans to add this aircraft as of moment. Next, what are the top five things on your to-do list for 1.49? Uh, Lassar has just responded, damage models, British naval aircraft and tuned gunners. And uh, that's his top three priorities. Next, when can we expect the Kawasaki KL100? First of all, we will add the KI-61 and after that, KI-100. Next, do you think the ability to knock out a plane's hydraulic system could be added? P possibly. Two, after seeing how popular the Ultra Sim events have been, do you think you could have multiple events running at the same time for different tiers? Probably. Do you have any plans to add any more city maps? Possibly. What uh, Next, what happened to the cannons in this patch? They are terrible now. That's our response. It's working with it. I do nothing to receive to rectify that situation. So something changed somewhere else. So, in other words, not Lassar's responsibility. Next, oh, quite a long post here. Twenty questions. One, what do you say about the Fairy Barracuda? Possibly. What about another Focke-Wulf 198? No, no plans for now. Three, would you implement the Bl the Brewster SBM? Probably. Four, another torpedo bomb for the USA Vindicator. Uh, will you add the SB to you Vindicator? No way for now. Four, do you have plans for the Gloucester E28-39? Not, not at the moment. Six, what do you say to the Aero A32 as a German low tier premium? No chance. Uh, um, seven, Armstrong Whitworth Atlas Mark 1. Possible but not soon. Eight, Briguet 20, uh, 270 series as a low tier of the British Tech Tree. No chance. 9. Curtis 052. No chance. 10. You said no to all variants of the J52, but why the USSR tree is getting a TB3? We have another plan for t tier 1 aircraft. For the near future, we have no plans about the J52. 11. Uh, no chance. For the, you said no chance of the BF 109's willing. Uh, maybe a, will you consider making it an expensive premium? No chance. 12. Will we see the Imam Row 37? No comment. 13. The Ambrosini SS4. No comment. 14. Any chance the Soviet tree gets the Berezhnyak is a is a B B I one rocket plane? No chance. I've answered this question many times. 15. Another good Soviet premium would be the Borovko Florov I207. Don't think so. 16, 17, 18 and 19 are all small chances. And those questions are uh, adding the Kutovan FK-55, ME-328, MiG I-250 and the Holger Hotspur. And all of those have a small chance, but probably not. 20. No chance about the BF-109D. Next. Can we expect the HE-177 in 1.49? No. 2. Will we see the more J-2Ms? Yes. 3 and 4. When will it be possible to see the A-7M and NET on the HAK and other flying boats? Can't say at the moment. Next on the list, one any ET in the Italian tech tree. Uh, more info in the summer. Two, what will be done for Italy? Italy's lack of tier five. I think we have a solution. Three, any chance of seeing the Fiat G Fiat G nine one? No comment. Four, any chance that Germany will also get the G nine one as a premium? Uh, no. Five, is the A six M five getting a lower BR anytime soon? Possibly. Any new Japanese jets in the works? Nothing for now. Uh, next, what do you think about the suggestions for HE162 with the Junkers Yumo 004D? Possible, but not soon. Next, why is the Heinkel 177 Greif such a low priority? It's not low priority, but we have many aircraft to do. Next, one, when can we expect the BR suggestions proposed by the Warthorn Play Council? Quite soon. Two, is there any possibility of seeing a German jet using Ramjet? And Lassa responds, give me an example. One, have you made, sorry, next. One, have you made any progress on those questions of mine that you d d d deferred last week? Uh, yes, the damage models have priority. Two, what's going with flaps and when can we expect a fix? Right now they, they rip at the lowest speeds. VSN could answer more correctly. Three, the 109G14 is missing fuel tank armour. Fixed will be will be with the nearest uh, resource updating patch. Uh, scrolling down a bit now, few few people having a conversation. Uh, here we are. 
Will the Mosquito FB get its current wing pylons? Its correct wing pylons? The bug, re the bug requires more references. But it seems to be implemented eventually. Next one, what is the possible US designed jet bomber we could see soon? No info. Two, will aircraft like the A1 Sky Raider uh, and more P 51 variants be ready in 1.49? Possibly. Three, what is the A40? Well, is there a possibility of the A40 or T60 added in game? I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> Next, will the British fleet air arm be a bare minimum, or will it include more new planes? That's our response, a mixture of the both. Next, one, will the BF-49C be delayed past 1.49? First, we will add the BF-49B. Two, a long time ago you told us we might see the KR-102. Uh, will it be delayed? Two, uh, I hope you will receive it at 1.49. Three, similarly a few months back said very soon I think the KI-2-1, no comment, everything is possible. Four, you recently said the KI-67 is a new priority for Japanese bombers. Uh, is the KI-61 going to come before the KI-21? No chance for that situation. Five, any progress on the HAKM Emily, or is it still a lower priority than the KI-21? It will be later. Next, 11 questions from this user. Question one, currently the Stuka siren is only client side. Uh, can he fix this problem or tell the people who can do it to make the Stuka server side so more players can hear it? I will check, excuse me. Two, when will planes that are distinctive sounds such as the whine of the P-51 get meddled? Not my question, but I will talk with sound designers. Three, is there any way to, is there anywhere the distance at which planes can be heard be increased? Probably. Four, are there any plans to work on the AI and make them more sophisticated? Yes. Five, you have expressed that you have been contemplating both giving the D5 Stuka back its dive brakes or creating an entirely new early variant with dive brakes. Have you decided? We will have a solution soon. Six, the black smoke on damaged aircraft, while pretty, is very misleading. Uh, we'll fix that. Seven, can we expect new sound for British 30 cals? Or 303, sorry. No info. Eight, we already have a new very good sound for the American 30 cal in tanks. Uh, can you transfer the sound to 30 cal in the planes? Uh, no info at the moment. Nine, would you be willing to add a client side option for players to see the allied code names for Japanese planes like Mavis, Emily, uh, and so on and so forth? Uh, not soon, they will have low priority. 10. To add some legitimacy to the fact that Americans have captured Japanese aircraft, could you talk to your artists and have them create Chinese nationalist skins to replace the current test skins on the planes? It's reasonable. 11. The way the current pilot kill mechanic works, when the pilots are killed in multi-crew bombers, the entire crew counts as dead, all guns cease firing and the crew has no chance to bail out. Is there any way to change it so bombers with dead pilots are automatically bail out the crew or the player is allowed to bail the crew out? I will see what I can do. Next one, any chance to see the HU-274, HG 70 Yak-3U, Yatsenku, I-28, Grigorovich, IP-1, Vickers, Wesley, XF-8B? No for most of them. And, uh, <laughs> question two, with the, with the HO-229 V3 get a thousand kilo bomb load sometime in the future? We will see, for now, I have, for, for now I have no info. Three, do some planes not have an interior light? It's normal that normal planes have it, we are working with it. 5. Can there be an option in the future to disable the gunsight telescope? Possibly. Next, will we see any more P-40s? Not soon. Next, what is the likelihood of the Yak UT-1B? Very small. Next, will you do something about the bomber damage models in Arcade? It's no fun to fly them at all. We don't need good gunners, but a bit of damage resistance of the B-17 Lancasters and B-24s are not victims to single salvos. Yes, I will rework its damage model. Next, are the Dornier 335 109K14 coming in 1.49? No. How many German planes coming? Many. Will there be new bombs and more Mark MK108 ammunition? Not in 1.49. Next, could the HE107 be changed so that it will be developed sooner? For next few patches, there are no chance to put it between something else. Next, 
One, when can you add six HVARs, 200 pounds, bomb load with the P-51s? Probably 1.49. Two, any possibility of North American B-45? Someday. Three, any possibility of Boeing Stratojet? No way. Four, how's the progress of Japanese early twin-engine medium bombers? Work in progress. Ki-21, almost ready. Five, the G-3M2 had two different variants with different defensive weapons. Which will be introduced? Uh, both will be, but not at the same time. Six questions about the Sky Raiders. Will the A1 and AD4 both be released at the same time? Uh, not at the same time. Seven, what's the dev team's highest priority at the moment? Uh, damage models. And that's the end of Lassar Responds this week. And that's the end of the community segment. Now, usually I would be going on to talk about either military history or weapons and tactics, but since the 1.7 patch notes were very long and this video is already over an hour and a half, I will uh, unfortunately be leaving those segments out, lest this video be incredibly long, so <laughs> upwards of three hours, maybe even more. So I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Rolling Thunder, and I hope that uh, you'll be back soon. Thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to subscribe to receive updates to future uh, videos uh, and shows. So thank you very much for listening. I've been Rich with the Sky, and I'll see you soon.